Welcome back to another Fusion tutorial. So I recently created this Fusion satellite 3D map effect that you're seeing right here. And I posted it in a few places and quite a few people are asking me actually how I made this. So I figured why not make a video on it? Right off the bat, I'm just gonna show you guys my node setup I have for this specific effect. And I'm gonna go through and show you how to do this. Typically, I will work from left to right on my nodes, but this one, I kind of jump around all over the place a little bit. So I'm just gonna give you guys just like an overview of what the node structure looks like at first, and we will deep dive into it as we kind of go along in this tutorial. So without further ado, let us go ahead and jump into creating a brand new composition with a new effect and show you guys how I achieve this. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is come over to a website called heightmap.skydark.pl. I will leave a link to this in the description of the video. This is a website that is designed to export real world terrain data for a video game called City Skylines. It's kind of like SimCity, but cooler i've played it a little bit and it's pretty fun but um this website allows you to export real world terrain data and import it into the video game but we're going to hijack that and instead of importing into city skylines we're going to import it into fusion and there's a couple things we can do here so you'll notice that um we kind of have this grid layout and this is a layout designed specifically for city skylines we don't really have to worry too much about that but let's find, I wanna do a map of Yosemite. I think that would be really cool. So let's create, let's go into the village here. Okay, so this square is basically going to dictate what our map is going to contain. So I think, yeah, let's center it right there. And if we come over here to the little information button, we're gonna have a lot of, um, a lot of data here. So what I wanna do is just click this auto button and you'll notice that the base level and height scale changed and you're gonna wanna make sure those calibrate to whatever location you're at. So whatever place you pick, just click the auto and it will take care of that. You can come in here and customize your map size and if you wanted your map to be bigger or smaller, it's entirely, your, it's entirely at your discretion. We're just gonna do the base size 17.28 kilometers and we'll just make sure everything is good to go there. Okay, now I wanna come over here to our layers and I wanna look at satellite. This is the data I want to export first here. So we have a toolbar up here on the left on this website. We have download raw height, bleh. We download raw height map. We have download PNG height map. We also have download map image. And this is what we're gonna to wanna to download here for now. And whichever map style you have selected, that is what it will download. So we're gonna go ahead and download our satellite view. So we'll just download that. Next, I want to, you can try and mess around with this raw height, bleh, raw height map. I was not able to get this to work right, so I was stuck using the PNG and that is okay. We'll just make it work. So now that we've downloaded our images, we can take a look at these and see that we have a satellite view of exactly what we want and it is perfectly lined up with our height map that we want. And this is what we wanna see. If you're seeing colors that are pure white or just pure black, odds are you did not calibrate your map layers over here and you'll wanna check that if those are the results you're getting. Okay, so now that I'm over here, trying to import those images into DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna notice that the satellite image for some reason shows as offline. I don't really know why this is. I am using DaVinci Resolve 18 beta, so maybe that's the issue, I don't really know, but our height map is A-OK. -okay. So we're just gonna go ahead and drag that over. And the way I got around this last time is I converted this to a JPEG and I was able to import it in perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I went ahead and converted this in Affinity Photo to a JPEG. And as you can see, we can now see it inside of DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna go ahead, drag and drop that down here into our media. And I'm not gonna be too worried about organizing things down here just for a tutorial for you guys, but feel free to do things at your own discretion. So what we're gonna wanna do down here, you can see this is our original Fusion composition that I made. Let's just go ahead and let's do this again here. So we will go to effects, fusion composition, and drag it down. And we want this to be 
15 seconds. So our first our first composition was 15 seconds, so let's drag and drop this to find 30. Oop, one more. There we go. Okay. So we'll just extend that out here. And with our fusion composition selected, we're gonna go ahead and open up fusion and we see nothing. So what we're gonna wanna do is go to our media pool here and we're going to want to drag and drop both of our images that we just captured. So we have both our height map as well as our satellite map. And let me just move these over to the side here. Okay. So there's a couple of things we need to do. We are going to be working in both 2D and 3D space. So with our media out, out of the way over here, let's go ahead and start working on that. So I'm gonna start building the 3D scene first. So first thing I want is an image plane. We'll just go ahead and add that. We are also going to want to add a displacement, a 3D displacement. And we're also going to want to add a 3D transform. And then with that, we also want to add a 3D merge. And in that merge, we're also going to want to add a 3D camera. And with this camera, we're gonna want to add two, oops, two 3D transform nodes underneath it. And I will show you guys why in a minute. And it just kind of depends on the animation that you want to go with, but for doing the animation I did in the original video, we're going to use two. So if we go ahead and load in our merge node, we see we have a camera and a plane here in our 3D viewport. So what I'm going to do is load in our satellite image into this image plane and boom, there we go load it in and now we are going to want to rotate this uh, on the x-axis I think we're doing that right let's see let's say 90 and I think we're upside down I'm not 100% sure but I think we are let's find out what happens with our displacement so we're gonna take our height map here and we're gonna plug it into this displacement node and wow a bunch of things happen but I can already tell you we are upside down because things are moving in the wrong direction. We want them to move up, not down. So we're gonna go ahead and take this transform and we're gonna make this negative 90. There we go. And uh, yeah, this looks like a disaster. So we're gonna go ahead and take our image plane and we're going to crank up the subdivisions to 500. We're also going to want to upgrade our scale to 10 there we go so i kind of want to up upsize the scale of this just because i don't really like zooming in so far just the way the 3d viewport works so scaling it up makes it a little easier to navigate things and it's actually looking kind of decent right now i'm pretty pretty happy with this actually i could almost leave it like this and i think we'd be okay so our displacement actually let's go back to controls subdivisions for working inside of resolve I kind of left it at 500 but for my final render I cranked it up to a thousand subdivisions and it just kind of adds a little more detail in the further you go but there's a certain point that you reach where you're adding more more vertices than there are pixels in your image and you're just not doing yourself any favors unless you're starting to do some custom sculpting or things like that and we're not going to get into that today in fact that's more of a blender thing than it is a fusion thing so we have everything loaded in and we are looking good so now i want to animate our trail that's one thing i did in the original video and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So we're gonna come back here to our 2D space and with our media satellite image, we're gonna add a background. Oops, I can't spell today for anything. And we already have a merge node added. And as you can see, our background is black, but we need to size it to the same image size as our satellite image. So let's come over to 
image and I know that these are 2560 by 2560 and that did nothing oh yes I need to disable auto resolution okay 2560 versus 2560 and there we go now we're covering up so what we need to do is change the color of this to what we want our trail to look like so I mean we could use the color wheel down here might try let's go with the yellow I think yellow will work oops I did not want that there we go okay yellow will be just fine and we're going to select our background and we're going to add a polygon mask to it and with that selected we're going to come over here to with our with our satellite image selected here actually we can just load in our merge node and see what we're doing we can do some masking so what i'm going to want to do is just kind of draw a line of a trail i want to make and you're just going to click and click and click and click until you have what you want so i'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this just for the sake of saving some time for you guys okay so i have our trail drawn and um, I don't even know if I'm actually following the road or not, but I think we're gonna be okay. No one's gonna know except for us. So I think that is good. And typically with a mask, you're gonna connect it back up to your first node to kind of create a, uh, a 2D object, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna leave it as it is. And we're gonna leave invert unchecked, solid checked, and we will change our border width to it's a little too wide but you can already see what it's doing let's go 0.003 um, 0.004 perhaps I think three was better 0.003 let's work with that okay but you can already see what we got going here we just have a line that is drawn and it is important that you start from the point you want your animation to start at as well as end where you want it to end. So with our line drawn, all we have to do now is animate it. So let's jump to the first frame of our animation and inside of our mask node, we're going to select our length and you can see what's happening here. So we're gonna go ahead and add a keyframe there. Then we're gonna jump to the last frame in our animation and we're going to crank our length all the way back up to one and so what that's going to do is slowly as i jump through these frames is just going to draw that line across the map as the frames advance and so there you have our 2d animation so now we need to go back into our 3d viewer and we need to animate our camera so to do that first thing i want to do is add in a render node and this is going to show us what the camera sees and what the camera sees is kind of terrible. So let me rearrange things here a little bit. Okay. So what I want to do here, let's drag our, let's go to this transform node, our first transform node selected. Let's drag the camera back and let's pull it up and then let's rotate it on uh, down yeah there we go okay and you know what i could probably go a lot higher i think and is from here it's just a matter of adjusting things making more adjustments and making sure it doesn't break anything else and i think we're okay there so with that view selected, what I want to do is I want to have the camera do kind of like a circular orbit around the center of the map. And that's why we have our second transform node here. And to animate that, it's a little bit difficult if I just use this single node here. The easiest way to do that is to make the center of the object the center of the map. However, with this first node, you notice that the center of the object is in the object itself. However, if we add a second transform node or a 3D transform node, 
our center is shifted back into the center of our scene. And so that gives us the ability to rotate along our Y axis. And now we can rotate the camera. And that gives us a lot of room to play with. So let's shift things over. Kind of want to play around with this and get the image right. Okay. And I'm kind of offsetting the center of where the camera is going to be rotating, just adjusting these settings on the second node. And that's okay. So let's say, well, we can see the map is clipping up here in this corner. I don't really want that. So let's shift this to the side there. Okay. Okay. So let's go to rotation and we're going to add a keyframe, right? Actually, let's jump to the beginning of our animation and add a keyframe right there. And then we're going to jump to the end of our animation and we're going to rotate this just a bit more. And I think that will be good right there. So jumping to the first, I don't think my computer is strong enough to play this. Let me see if I can reduce the subdivisions. Maybe that will help a little bit. Let's go to 100 and see what that does better, but not great. Okay, so we'll just skip through this like so. And you can see the line getting drawn as our camera rotates around. And I think that looks really good. Okay, and there you guys have it. That is what you do, how you make a 3D scene with an animated trail map. And what you're gonna wanna do after this is take your render node, put it into your media out, and then you can come back here to your timeline. It's pretty simple and straightforward, not very complicated. And I think you guys are gonna have fun with this one. So if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.